Hey everybody, welcome to Practical Alchemy. Tonight I am going to be making a cookie cutter for St. Patrick's Day and I am going to walk you through the process because I think there's some really interesting learnings here specifically regarding how to do control point curves. If you watch the channel, you know I do have a Halloween themed cookie cutter video, but I think this is a nice simple project and it's a good skill builder if you are just jumping into Fusion 360. Plus it's holiday themed, so that's always fun. All right, so here's what we're gonna do first. Let's jump into the sketch. This should only take a couple minutes and then we're gonna select the center point rectangle. I'm gonna click on the origin point and click out from there. And then we can hit escape. All right, next thing that we're gonna do is click this and this, and then we're gonna set those to be equal and set this rectangle to be four inches in length. All right, now what we need to do is we need to do an offset of this. So we're gonna grab their offset tool and we're gonna offset the inside of this to negative 0.335 inches. Great. And that is going to be the inner frame for our cookie cutter model. So let's change that to construction geometry and we will finish that sketch. And I am going to rename that frame so that we don't forget what it is. All right, now let's go ahead and insert our graphic. Uh, if you haven't done that, you should just go up here and insert and insert the decal. Um, now, if you don't have this, you can certainly screenshot it from my screen in a second here. So I'm going to uh, go in and edit this feature. Uh, I had just done some simple sketching and some ideation. I'm actually going to do a follow-up video next on bar signs. So how to do a bar sign. So I had a little bit of ideation in there as well on that. So we're just going to scale this image up. And we're just going to make sure that it fits nicely inside of our inner frame. All right, looking pretty good. A little bit smaller. All right, drag it around. Beautiful, that will work out perfectly. All right, and obviously with the control point frame, I set mine to four inches. If your printer is smaller, I would recommend setting this to be whatever the maximum size of your print bed is, right? We don't want to print outside of that, obviously. All right, so I'm going to hit OK on this, and I'm going to set it here for a second in case you need to take a screenshot if you want to follow along with me and copy this image, but should be pretty straightforward. All right, I'm going to hide this just for a second. I'm sorry, hide that for just a second. Hide my sketches for a second here, and now I'm going to create a new sketch on the top plane and turn the canvases back on so that I can see them again. All right, so to create this, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna use the, not the fit point spline, which if you are new to the program, you might think that's the only type of spline that you can use. We're gonna come back on here and use the control point spline. Why are we using the control point spline? Well, to be honest with you, I like it better. I think it's a better tool. Um, I'm just gonna enter, oops, no. I just like the tool better. I think that it is a more natural way of defining curves and then hit the accept button here. And we're just gonna work our way around our shamrock. I think it just, it's, it just makes more sense to me in terms of how curves work to do it in this fashion, uh, especially when we're doing something like this where we've got pretty good control over the shape. Now I'm just doing it in four points, but you certainly don't have to. You can definitely add some additional points here. In fact, for this last one, I think I am gonna add an additional point there. All right, just working our way around our shamrock here. So here we're only gonna need three points. We'll add some, uh, and essentially what I'm doing is I'm clicking on the, in case you can't see it, I'll show you right here. In case you can't see it, I'm clicking on this end, essentially, every time that I want to go to a square corner. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of visually eyeballing it up to see, okay, do I have enough curvature here to potentially make this shape? As you can see, I'm not following the shape exactly. What I'm doing is just kind of laying out my control point, and then I'm gonna go back and edit them. So now I'm gonna hit escape to exit the tool, not the sketch, 
And now you can see I can actually go in and grab these control point handles and I'm manipulating them to follow the outer shape that I want. I'm probably going to do another tutorial video at some point on understanding curvature and continuity there. See this one, you can see I probably don't have quite enough detail um, to get that curve exactly. So if you don't feel like you've got enough control point curvature here, you don't click on the line, you click on the actual spline here and you insert a control point. And then you click it again, sorry. Oops, <laughs> one too many. Yeah, that's fine. There we go, all right. See, now you can see I've got a little bit more freedom in terms of the fidelity of this corner here. So I'm going to show you that one more time just because I kind of bumbled through it. <clears throat> if you feel like you're not quite getting the curvature that you want out of your spline, what you can do is you come in, oh, hover over your spline, you right click and you do an insert spline, <laughs> insert spline control point, and then you're going to click again on your point and it's going to add that uh, additional control point there. Now you're going to want to hit escape to keep from adding just more and more control points. But as you can see now, I've got another segment on my control point spline here that I can manipulate. All right, so continuing around our shamrock here, I'm just gonna do that as I go. Looking good, doesn't have to be exact. You're just trying to get a nice, smooth shamrock shape. I think we probably could use a little bit more here just to, there we go, hit escape. There it is. And just massage those curves. They are what you want. Okay. As you can see, I'm not going to bother cutting the corner here. I'm actually going to do that with a radius in the next step because I want that to be a live element. So I'm going to do that. Da, da, da. Just try to find the curvature. Not quite getting enough there. So you almost have to, you have to double tap it once to actually select the spline, even though it, it kind of seems like you're selecting it the first time, you're really just hovering over it. So there we go with that. Make sure we don't get outside of our inner bounding box here because then it will go past when we do our offsets in the next step. And that is looking pretty good. So let's finish that sketch. And that is going to be, turn my sketches back on so I can see them, turn my canvases off. That is looking like our shamrock. All right, so let's hit save really quick just so we don't lose our work. All right, and I am gonna call this our... I always fat finger. I'm a huge fat finger of the, <laughs> of the caps lock button. It's wild. All right, great, so now we've got our shamrock here. Let's go ahead and jump back in here and fillet these corners really quickly. Grab our fillet tool. Come on down here and click these two points. All right, and now you can see the, the reason that I came back and did that is if I would have just tried to go around this curve, every time I made any adjustments here, it would have messed it up. But as you can see here now, as I do this, it's go adjusting the tangency continuity here, which is what I really want, is a nice clean tangency continuity there. And I'm gonna do another one there. Oh. <laughs> uh oh, seem to have lost the program for a second there. All right. I broke it, I broke Fusion 360. All right, there we go. Great. And I'm just going to leave these like that. Um, 
Actually, let's... Do I want to do that? I don't think I'm going to. I'm just going to go square corners here. All right, square corners here. All right, and now we're going to finish this sketch. Now, what I like to do is we can turn our frame off because we don't need it anymore. And while I could just use my offsets from this sketch, I don't really like to do that. I want this one to be, especially because none of this is really constrained. I don't really like to mess with it. So I'm going to turn this off for a second. I'm going to do a sketch and I'm going to do another sketch on the top plane. And what I'm going to actually do is come in here and I'm going to project all of these curves. So I'm just going to select all of the curves in my shamrock. And hit OK. You can see it is a closed curve. So I'm going to finish the sketch. And now I can turn my shamrock off and turn my copy of my shamrock on. Great. So now with the copy of the shamrock turned on, I can go in and edit this sketch and we are going to do our frames here. So let's go ahead and do our first offset. So again, we're just going to select everything in our shamrock shape. It's also a good check to make sure that everything is maintaining its continuity here. All right. And now we're going to come out. And what did we want to set our frame offset to? We want to do this at negative 0.06 inches. That's a good one for my printer. I catch it. 0.06 and hit OK. All right. And now we're going to do another offset. Again, grabbing all of the curves of our shamrock. and drag it out and this one is going to be for the frame edge so we're going to set that to negative 0.35 inches and hit okay great there we go now we've got shamrock frame number two really coming together here so we can finish our sketches and let's do a quick save now we are going to offset our inner shamrock all right and let's extrude this up to an inches of 0.65 inches. Now, one of my things that I've made a mental note for myself is that I have always just kind of don't really change the appearance, which is fine for me. But as an observer, I'm sure you guys are just watching this being like, oh, I love looking at this gray object on a gray screen. So let us go in and change that for you. So we're going to go a little bit more in the holiday spirit here. And let's go ahead and apply. There we go. A nice shamrock color. Great. Much better. Much improved. Okay. Now, this body, we need to come in, turn this sketch back on. And we need to do the outer frame so we have something to grab onto. So let's click and select this area here. You're going to offset that by 0.1 inches. And looks pretty much like a cookie cutter, huh? We're almost done. Okay, so last thing that we need to do here is we just need to do a little bit of filleting. Um, now, the reason that I didn't fill it here is because it was really bogging down the computer. So let's go ahead and do that not on the outside edges because it's okay if the outside edges are a little bit sharp. We are going to want to fill at the inside edges. So first thing, let's go ahead and chamfer the outside first. So let's go into the modify uh, chamfer command. We are going to select all of our outside edges here. All right. Looks going around looking good. Okay, now we're not going to do a equal distances because we want this to be a pretty sharp one. So we're going to do two distances. Okay, so we're going to do the first one at 0.02 inches. And we're going to do the second at 0.15 inches. And so you can see now it's got a pretty steep uh, step down here for the edge of the cutter. Now, if you watch the other video on the Halloween cookie cutters, what you'll see is that that would leave this because we set our original edge at 
0.35 inches, and now we offset that by 0.02. That gives it right about 0.3. And so what that, I think my math's a little bit off there. What am I doing? Okay, so that was 0 0.06. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> wow. Sorry, late night math. Okay, so this edge was 0 0.06. This inset chamfer is 0 0.2. Let's look at the top face here. Sorry. And let's turn the camera to, or the graphic for a second. Okay, so one more time, now that I understand, got myself figured out here. Looking at the top view, this edge thickness is 0 0.06 thick. The offset of this chamfer is 0 0.02, which means that this edge is now 0 0.04 inches thick. My nozzle is 0.04 inches thick. So while you can go a little bit thinner, I tend not to like to do that. So you get a nice uh, solid filament at the leading edge of this cutter. So that's looking good. If your 3D printer is more exacting than mine, then by all means, you know, do or play with it and find an edge that works for you. All right, so now let's go ahead and fill up these inner corners just a bit because we don't need them to be this insanely sharp for our cookie cutter. And I think, you know, it just kind of helps it to not break off sometimes if it gets too sharp. Last one. All right, and it doesn't have to be big. Let's just say, let's start with 0.1 and see what that looks like. All right, that's way too big. See, now you see we're starting to cut through the edges of our cookie cutter. We definitely don't want to do that. Let's go in here and edit this feature. I'm gonna drag it by hand just so I can really play around. Okay, so that's 0.05, so let's just go with 0.02 inches. That's a nice soft radius there. Great. All right, so now we're gonna hit save and okay. And this thing's done. You guys did it just like that. What did that take us? Like, you get the recording? Probably about 10, 15 minutes by the time we walk through it all. So you guys, that's it. Uh, we're, next thing we're gonna do is we are going to send it over to Cura to slice it. So to do that, what we need to do is just select this body then come up here to the file menu and hit export. You wanna make sure that the type is set to something that the, the set to the slicer can read. So I would say an STL file is something you're gonna do. And then once you're ready, just hit export and you're ready to go. Next, it's gonna export the job. It's gonna take a couple minutes. You're gonna load it up into Cura. You're gonna 3D print it, and that is gonna be it for you guys. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it to be helpful. If you did, leave a like. If you had any questions or topics you'd like to see in future videos, leave those in the comment section. And as always, hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date as I release new content. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. And happy St. Patrick's Day.